here is everything that I need to fix this light. I found it on the side of the road. It's angle poise, it says so Oop, in there. It's a little bit mucky, but nothing that a little rub down won't fix. So what we're going to do first is look at all the parts we need. Might need to replace the lamp holder inside. So we've got a lamp and parts of the lamp holder, new plug, cable, some satsumas to eat, cable stripping, cable cutting tools, little pair of scissors because I've got fabric cable, cutters, little screwdriver, and a spanner. So let's move all this stuff out of the way. First thing we're going to do, get a cloth, rub it down just to get any of the loose, just to get any of the loose dirt off, and see what we've got. I will try to stop knocking the table. Oh, look at that. It's pretty gross. So this was in the street next to some old garages. They've been there for some time. I've been walking past it for about two months. Taking my kids to school and back. And I thought, I wonder if anyone owns it. I wonder if someone's keeping it. But after being out in the rain for a very long time, decided to pick it up. I'm just going to move, move this junk off the side and you can't see it, I still can, but I'll try and pretend it's not there. It's probably been a minute so far of you watching me rub some dirt off of an old lamp. First thing to do is to remove the old cable. Someone's already chopped it off down here. And these are some grommets to protect the cable that's running through. I'm gonna yank it out. Now we might have a problem with the new cable being th too thick to go in and out of the body of this light. As far as I remember, if you were a commercial lighting manufacturer, I'm just going to chop this cable off, you need to be very careful about the cables that are going in and out of your lights and whether your light is defined as, an, with, as having internally internal wiring or, or external wiring. And the requirements are on the cable diameter and I think the insulation. But what I'm going to be doing is using external grade, not as in outside the house but outside of internal wiring for all of the wires on this light. So if I cannot get the cable back in, which I don't think I'll be able to, it's rubbish then I will just be running it around the outside like a uh, like a microphone boom. And my intention is to do all of this in one go without editing the video because I'm a little bit lazy. So what we're going to do next is take out the insides. There's some more leaves junk in here and because this has been out in the open for a long time there may be some water damage maybe some insect damage maybe a little squirrel moved in for a bit maybe someone came along nipped some of the cables with a little pair of cutters just to be a bit of a nuisance Although in all likelihood, it'll be absolutely fine inside. But I'm going to check it, and if it looks at all knackered, I'm going to replace the lamp holder with a new one. Also, 
the lamp holder that's in there is the old British bayonet style. We have two prongs that go in and twist rather than the more typical European and North American, I think most of the world style, of having a screw in light bulb. Like that one, Edison screw. 27 millimeter screw in the UK, 26 in the US. For I'm sure a very ooh, valid reason. So this arm I'm done with for now. So I'm gonna put it to the side. So you can see. Ooh, that away. So then this switch at the back is missing a screw. Not a screw, a nut. Luckily I have a spare one. It's an M10 fine thread half nut. The majority of lighting in the UK at least. I think Europe uses M10 fine threads a lot of their fittings. Which means 13 millimeter, I don't know, usually 13 millimeter spanners, but this one's a bit too big. So I'm trying to get this cord grip out the side. So I can get to the back of the wires. Into the lamp holder. I'm going to need a big pair of pliers. So these pliers are going to go in, grab hold, the nut on the inside and then hopefully I can squeeze this one out from the outside. do happen or did happen to work for a lighting manufacturer which is where I got all of these parts from forgot to uh, undo that old bit of cable there first so here you can see the core grip with a cable in it now I'm going to take that grub screw all the way out and just stick it on the side somewhere safe Boop. Now that cable inside should be loose, so this part comes out. This is the lamp holder, a bracket which holds onto the back of the arm. Cable's coming in, live, brown, makes you poo yourself. Come up for the switch. The switch is knackered. Oh, it might be okay. And the lamp holder on itself. So actually, I don't need to get this off. It's just going to go back into the same spot. So what I'll do instead, quickly wipe out the inside. I could clean this properly. I could paint it. Could do all sorts, but I quite like the slightly damaged finish. This is aluminium. Spun aluminium, about a millimetre thick. So instead of undoing this, I'm going to go back in, do it back up again. And tight. Now 
that switch is interesting. If that's broken, which it really feels like it is, I'm going to have to get a replacement. Let's undo the nut on the back. Put that down with the others. Remove the switch from the housing. There's that little nib on the side there. It's engaged in that hole. That's just a little plastic shell. Get rid of that. This is water damage. Sounds like it might still be clicking, but the springiness has completely gone. So let's scrap that part. Undo it so I can put them in the right bins. That's the switch. I need to find something with a similar size thread or diameter on the thread to go into this bracket. And that's oh, it's already loose. Unscrew the back of the lamp holder. See what we've got here. And this, if you look inside here, you can see. Maybe there you go. There is the bayonet hook. There's another one on the other side. Which is how it differs from a European cable. European cable, European lamp holder. These often unscrew, so let's unscrew that. The front bit's just going to be a bit of plastic, possibly Bakelite, some sort of thermoset plastic. Part of the back, that's fine. This probably would work. Ignore the spider webs inside. bit rusty on the back so we can clean that up but I want to upgrade it or change it maybe maybe not an upgrade depends who you talk to change it to a screw fitting like bulb so I'm going to ignore the switch for now first thing we've got to do put the lamp holder together nothing to grab onto with the threads here. No flat spots, so I'm just going to nip that tight. In fact, inside this lamp holder there is a locking screw, so I can undo that screw. Pop it back in just a little. Screw this back in as far as it will go. Now, if I put this screw back in, it should jam the threads. Stop this ever coming out again. So that's good. And then back to the bracket. We're going to put our nut on the back. And do it up tight. So this is going to be as tight as I can. So that should be good. So these parts are now very much fixed together. This is also putting an electrical continuity between the lamp holder and the bracket. 
and the shade. Next up, I'm going to go and find a new switch. So I'll pause it and we're back in the same spot. Got a new switch, but it's bigger than the old switch. Or at least the diameter of the thread there is bigger, so it's not going to fit straight in the hole. So what I need to do is make it fit with a drill, using a step drill, because I'm lazy and it's easy. This also doesn't have screw terminations, so I've got a couple of spade terminals. These little guys, a bit of heat shrink to cover it up, something to shrink the heat shrink. Could, probably should use a hot air gun, but can use that. So this is to cut the heat shrink, crimpy crimp crimp, for the crimper. So first thing to do, drill out the hole for the bigger part. This drill isn't going to do much on its own. So I've got a driver here as well. See, eyeballing it, that is 12 millimeters. Makes sense. Probably originally for a half inch hole. And when we went metric in the UK, we thought half inch, it's about 13 millimeters. So let's see if we carefully drill this one first. If we carefully drill this out. Does it fit? Yeah, fits fine. So now we have the correct size hole in the shade. Do the same thing here. It's a bad idea holding on with one hand, drilling with the other. So I'm going to go slow and hopefully you're not going to watch me calling an ambulance in a minute. Yeah, it's starting to catch then. I'm going to pretend that I wasn't just trying to do that here. I'm going to go back downstairs. Quickly drill it out with a vise. But you won't see that. Right, I'm back. Drilled that out properly, should have done that in the first place. Picked up a deburring tool as well from the garage. Because right down in there, there's some burrs. So I'm just going to quickly run it around the inside. That will sort that out. I've also noticed this has been stoved in a little bit in the back. It doesn't affect how it works. So I'm going to leave it. This is by no means a museum grade example of one of these sorts of lights. I think some of that burr on the back has been there since it was new. But that'll do. So let's go back to what we were doing before. Put this in here. Let's put the spring washer in. So there's switch, bracket, spring washer, flat washer, nut. Now when this goes into the shade, there's an extra nut goes on the back. That's one that was missing earlier, that's no longer an M10 nut, this is bigger than that. Because this is not a lighting component. That round and this locating hole is also doing nothing now. What we do need is to start thinking about our cables. So the 
Get the rubbish bits out of the way. So the next thing I'm going to do is run a cable in here up to the switch back down on the other side into the lamp holder coming out the front. So a live wire needs to go up to the switch now, neutral goes down and on our lamp holder, unlike the original, we have an earth termination. So the cable I've got here is a twisted cable. That means the three wires are individually insulated, they're double insulated as all cables should be to be legally compliant in the UK. So let's have a look at what that means if I can get it to focus. Maybe I'll zoom in a bit. So here is a copper core. Let's look on not prone. There we go. Here is copper core outside you can see the coloured sleeve then outside that is a separate second insulation layer. Lots of twisted cables do not have that second layer. So what I'm going to do for now is go back to the right zoom, zoom, stick these cables through neutral and earth. We'll go straight down into the lamp holder. I'm going to deal with the uh, loose cable ends and the frayed ends soon. I'm going to loosen off some of the live wire. So this needs to go up to here and then an amount comes back down into the lamp holder. So let's snip it off. So first bit I'm going to do is the lamp holder part. For this one I'm going to completely remove the fabric sleeve. We don't need it inside, you're never going to see it. Chuck it in the rubbish pile. Strip the ends. So this first end is going to be for the crimp. So pop that into the crimp. Get the crimp tool. Make sure it's on the correct setting. Give it a good squeeze. So that is ready to go one end into the lap holder, the other end on here. I'm going to get a bit of sleeve over the top because for some reason I do not have sleeved crimps. Just put that sleeve on, I'm going to shrink it with my lighter. Again, not the best tool for the job, but it does the job. Just one end on, then the other end. I'm just going to peel the fabric sleeve back a bit. Another little pop with the strippers. Then it's crimp time. Don't want to lose any of your copper strands. There we go. Crimp tool. We'll be done with that tool now. Put the insulation, or the insulation, the shrink on top. And very careful not to burn anything when you shrink it. Okay. 
This sleeve, I believe, is made of nylon or rayon. So that is almost ready to go. I just need to terminate these ends. So what I'm going to do is work out how much slack I need to be able to get to the screws. I think if I cut it about there, I'll be okay. Peel back, push back the uh, fabric sleeve. There's a little bit of a stray there, so I'm going to cut it off with some fishing scissors. You don't have to use fishing scissors. I just like them. Trim. 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 Oh, not quite trim. Almost trim. cable stripper can be a little bit touchy. So let's go with opening up all of these first. Now with a screw terminal lamp, the center is live this pin in the center should be live whereas with the bayonet it doesn't really matter because you can put the light in any way around so that could be live or that could be live i don't believe there's a standard but for these there is so i'm going to put the earth in first now the best way to do this is with ferrules on the cable end. What that means is that you're not screwing down onto the copper. You're screwing down onto a small metal ferrule that is protecting the copper. I don't have any. I don't have the tools to do it. So for this time, it's going to be straight onto the copper. You'll also notice I cut all three of these cables to the same length, which is both easier and intentional. These three terminal screws. Two of them are live and neutral are inset and the earth sticks out so if you were to pull this really hard the live and neutral will go taut and pull out before the earth does. So now I'm going to squeeze this in. There's a locating slot on each side. One side has an earth strip in it. So that locating slot goes in the same place as this locating bulge in the threads, same on the other side. Push it in, squeeze it home. Shouldn't be that tough to get in. And that's pretty much it. You've got the E27 threaded part, that sits on top. This should be able to spin freely on top of the ceramic end. And then we have the threaded outer. There's again some little nubbins here that line up with these slots on the plastic. The whole lot can spin around, engage with the thread at the back, spin, 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 until it gets to the end. Then if you look inside, I don't know if there's enough light here, right down there there's a little tab you need to push out. And then what happens is if you try to unscrew this outer, that tab, if it's in right, 
we'll engage. There we go. So if you unscrew it, it doesn't go that far. So you can't accidentally expose the outers when it's in use. Less of an issue with this because it's in a housing, but still good to do. Last thing to do with this end of it is feed the cable back in. Of course, the cable's tangled. Thought I wrapped it up nice and neatly before I started this, but maybe not. Excuse me while I throw it on the floor. So, we've got a cable end. Gonna go up, in, through the inside to come out of that cord grip. You can't see what I'm doing. I can hardly see what I'm doing. At this end, the three wires on the twisty cable all taped together. That's how they turned up. Now, put it through. Last bit's going in, let's put that bundle down there. So now, I need to feed the switch through the switch hole at the back and line up the clamp parts inside and outside. So there we go, that's fed through and the clamp is in approximately the right spot. They'll be fine once I get the screws in. You know what, I think I might have done that at the back. So I'm going to push it out so these screws can stay in the right place. When I, there we go. When I drilled that hole in the back, I think I might have squished it. Let's put this nut on the back. I'm not going to do that up tight until I've got the arm back on. That will help hold the rest of the light together. So now let's get the arm back down. Get it lined up on the inside, line up on the outside. Hopefully get us. Just lost a bit of footage there, I don't know what, what we missed, but hopefully not a lot. So now we're putting cables inside with grommets. Looks like there's spiders in there. Wow, that's gross. Here's some little spider friends, might have disturbed their nest. Well, at least we found that out now rather than when I put it inside in the front room somewhere. Keep coming. I'm going to put this grommet in anyway. They'll find a way out. There's so many holes in these things. They'll get out no problem. Very carefully feeding this o-ring in without damaging the o-ring and especially without damaging the cable. There we go. Two bits done. Now the next one. So I'm going to pop this o-ring out. And 
this top one. The top one I'm going to feed onto the cable first. Bottom one's just going to go in at the end. I'm actually in the spare room in my house. So I've released some spiders into the house. But not tell anyone. We'll look for that cable showing up at the end. There it is. One, two, one, and three. Wonder what's living in this one. Have we got more spiders? Is it something else? Are there ants? Oh, they're really tiny mice. So this one needs to be a bit more careful about how much slack we leave. What we want to do is make sure that at the extremities of the movement, there's still plenty of slack. And also, well, it looks alright. And that looks okay to me. So I'm going to put the O-ring in, in that position. It's not technically cord anchorage, but this doesn't need cord anchorage here. The cord anchorage is up at the shade where the little cord grip is. That O-ring's in. Last O-ring going on. Just gonna feed it over the cable end. Run it down the length, take out the twists, and pop it in. Pop it in, sounds so easy. Just pop it in. There you go, extra close up. Just easing that in. Oh, thought it was in. Look to the camera, it's not in. There we go. Last bit to do. Should only take a couple of minutes. Wearing a cater plug. <laughs> 